Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. It's lovely to be here again. It's been about a week since my last video. So just a quick update. The muscles are healing fairly nicely. They're not 100% better yet. Um, I seem to be able to sit and draw for a bit longer. And thankfully, I've been given another extension on my deadline, which means as long as I don't push myself to begin with too hard, I'll make it and I'll still have time to do some fun art in between, hopefully. So even though I haven't been able to sit at my desk and work and record videos and things like that, I've found that I'm able to draw when I'm sat in a particular chair downstairs where it's impossible to film or, or whatever, take photographs, scan images and so on. Um, so I thought I'd show you what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, couple of weeks. It's two drawings, just two. And, um, they're both on A4 paper, they're both on A4 marker paper and, and the one I used was De La Rowney marker paper and for this one I used entirely Ohuhu markers and a white gel pen. That's it. Pencil just to put the outline on. Oh and Unipin pens. I think I used an 05 and an 01 I seem to remember for this. And it looks very intricate. Uh, yeah, it is. But like everything, it starts in one place. And I really thoroughly enjoyed doing this. And there are things here you may recognise, patterns I particularly like. I think this is, it's a version of poke, poke leaf. I think it is. These are sort of like sea urchin-y, sea creature-y, weird flowery kinds of things. This is a variation of crescent moon I guess um, in Zentangle pattern though I was drawing that long before I discovered Zentangle. This one's Shatek but again drawing it long before I discovered Zentangle. Um, this one I know it's a tangle pattern it's deconstructed. Don't ask me what it's called. I don't think it's an official Zentangle one. I think it's a, a tangle pattern that I most probably would have found on tanglepatterns.com years and years and years ago. These are inspired by Romanesque arches, in Romanesque churches, which were post Norman Conquest in the UK. So post 1066 for a hundred or so, or a couple of hundred years until the early English came in, where they went from rounded arches to pointed arches, but not a lot of ornamentation. That is when the Gothic comes along and things get crazy fancy. Um, but I have a bit of a love of the fanciness of Romanesque. I, I like Gothic, don't get me wrong, but um, I really do like Romanesque. So that's where that inspiration's come from. There's um, a shell here that looks a bit like a Nautilus or an Ammonite. And it's just a spiral shape filled with um, that Steva dance. Uh, you can't see this, but there's actually a background pattern here of little of the little circles all joined together which is um tipple but i use such a dark marker because i'll tell you about this now in a moment um any others this is sort of fengal or um what's the one oh i did it in inktober it ends up looking like a feather can't remember what it's called I'll, I'll try and remember to put it in the description box below. I've got flowers, all different things. I think this one here is, I think it's that zip, because it looks a bit like a zip. And uh, just spirals and eyes, because, yeah, what's life without a few eyes staring at me? It's quite a lot on this one. Um, this is sort of a bit like Senna, sort of bit the swirly curvy patterns that I enjoy so much and um, so on. Um, what's that one? Braise? Is that what you should call it? A bit in the shadow there if I bring it into the light. Sort of like a variation on um, Knightsbridge isn't it? Or Jonquil. Is it Jonquil? I don't know. There's so many, they, it's the thing with Zentangle patterns, there's so many of them are so similar which is what they're showing at the moment aren't they because it's the 12 days of Zentangle. So that's one that I've done and I did post this in the, the community section in the week when I finished it. This here was a nightmare. I'd already added these lovely soft greeny, um, greeny grey colours, which I absolutely love this colour. 
and I'd started adding some of this um, red greys. I, I tend towards these all the time and you think they wouldn't be bright and cheery but I really find this very pleasing. And so I thought, oh, these are leaves, so I'll put some green in them. Oh, at first the green was too bright and too in your face. And I thought it's too green, it's too toward, too much, too much towards the blue. I'll add some yellow. So I added a yellow, a glaze of yellow alcohol marker, which was better. But it was even more in your face, even though it'd been toned, sort of like um, a darker tone, but more vibrant. So I went over it with, I think I used one of the grey greens just went over it and dulled it right down and then it went too dark and you couldn't see the individual leaves a bit like this here was but I then went back with a white gel pen and some of the green is showing through and I've got no idea why green marker shows through white gel pen it shouldn't but it does perhaps it's because I was using a unipin signo but I'm quite happy with that. I do want to add some more highlights like the one I'm going to show you because I finished this one today. I've been working on this for a few days. A couple of other things I want to show you as well, which I'll come back to in a moment, is this here. Now, when you see this, because I will put a, an image of it in the community tab, I've tweaked the colours digitally in to make the contrast a bit greater between the highlights and the shadows but also I've added a bit of colour, um, boosted the saturation of the colour a little bit so they look quite bright bright and vibrant but I'm really really pleased with this in a couple of ways. I'm so annoyed that even though I used an eraser to pick up all the loose pigment here it's still smeared with the alcohol markers. I'm so gutted and this initial A here, I do want to use gold around it. I, I was thinking, I was beginning to toy with the idea of actually doing some gold leafing, but that would end up wrecking this because it's marker paper. So I've got to work out how to do that. Um, but I am quite pleased with everything else. Otherwise, there's some smears here and there, but I've managed to disguise them. Okay, so I love the colour combination. I actually went out for a very short walk today. It's milder here. We've had freezing weather and I mean freezing for over a week here in the UK where I live. We still got snow from goodness knows when ago and um, there was a bit more last night but it, it vanished today because the sun poked its head out and the temperatures rose above freezing. It's actually four degrees Celsius now, which is actually nearly tropical compared to the minus seven or minus eight Celsius um, we had overnight. Don't think it was last night, the night before, which would have been really cold. Anyway, so I really, what, what was I whittering about? Can't remember, but colours. I went out for a walk, that's what it was, and when I came back, I'd finished, partly finished this didn't realise I had more to do and I saw the colours and I thought oh my gosh that reminds me so much of William Morris. And William Morris, one of the arts and craft, well one of the founders of the arts and craft movement which was a precursor to Art Nouveau. And these sort of colours, it reminds me so much of some of the, the work he did there and chosen unconsciously there's sort of like these china blues like you'd find on old china in between there's yellow greys and some olive greens as well which sort of remind me of how um not real gold leaf but imitation gold leaf can age and become antiquey looking and that was the feeling i got from this but i Basically, I'm happy with this. I've got some strange colours going on. I've got some greenish colours here, but I repeated them. I've just noticed I've smudged some white there. Not a problem. I will sort that out. Oh, I've actually smudged some ink over there. Didn't notice that until now. Um, but here I've used a mixture of Ohuhu markers and chameleons. I dug my chameleon markers out, my chameleon colour tones and colour tops. And that's what I did, the olive green and some of the more greeny blues, um, paler blues there with this, because I was having, struggling to get these bluey colours here to blend nicely with a darker colour. There are some colours that can be tricky to blend, even though I'm using really, really good marker paper. 
and the markers blend like a dream. Sometimes the colours you get, they, they're just that little bit too far apart to blend nicely. And I was doing tip to tip. It's a technique where you touch the tip of one pen, hold, hold the pen you want to colour with upright, touch the tip of the other one to it so some of the ink goes into it and down. I thought, why am I doing this? I've got chameleons. So I intend to use my chameleons a bit more. Um, but most probably in co combination with these, with the Ohuhus, because I really like those as well. I like the colours in them. Not all of the colours, but a lot of the colours. So I then decided I'd use um, some coloured Imot pens, which are by Uni. They're described as Everfine. They're 0.4 millimetre and they're pigment, water-based pigment, to add some patterns and details. Now, this is what I want to do to the first one. Which is something I haven't done but now I've worked out what I want to do I will do it and so I did that then I added um, some white lots and lots of white dots and I really am quite happy with this and I will post you the slightly tweaked version but you know it's just it's just that I, I can do that. I don't feel guilty about it because you scan it in and things tend to get washed out a bit. So I'm just boosting some of the colours back up and perhaps a little bit from where they are originally. And yeah, there's eyes on this one as well. Yeah, I've actually got an embedded letter and that's where I want to put the gold. That's where I want the gold. And it's actually one I've actually feel quite happy about. I quite like the way I've got the shadows on it. That's a different story. Okay. So, two more things I want to show you. I've been going to, um, on a Tuesday evening, my time, six o'clock my time in the UK, um, a Zentangle class hosted by Tracy Hoff CZT. And I'll put her name um, in, the, in the box below and um, you can find her on Facebook, you know, and so on. And um, just for fun, just to say hello to people, just to go and chat and um, do some drawing. And we've been working on wreaths over the last couple of weeks, Christmas wreaths. And so the one I did um, a couple of weeks ago, I can't find, I've put it somewhere safe, but my my um, defence is that I was taking Cocodamol, which has codeine in and I was spaced out and the pain was spacing me out. So I did... I did a different one in between the sessions, which is this. And it was, it was just different because off I went. And although I haven't finished, I haven't added colour. I coloured the paper with Distress Inks. I've used some of the Emot pens here to add colour. It doesn't feel right to me, but I enjoyed the process of drawing it. And then this week, we had an extra session. Oh, we did Tuesday and then we had a little get together Wednesday lunchtime, I think it was, on Zoom, all on Zoom, all online. And I'd started this before the session and I carried on and got this far. And I do want to add patterns with coloured mop pens, but I just haven't got round to it. Um, so this here is, is inspiration from the new tangle pattern shown by Zentangle on their 12 days of Zentangle mycelium but I didn't do it I just did my own thing really I thought well that's a good idea that looks really fun and off I went and the others I've got no idea I just made things up as I went along oh there's some mooka and you can see that the oops I just bashed my camera you can see the ribbons are very different in shape because I couldn't remember how to do those because I just just couldn't get my head round it. I was being a complete Egypt because my head really has not, still isn't in the right place. So if you'd like me to do one of these in the coming days or if you'd like me to work with you on something like that, leave a comment below because I will. But what I've got here and I'm going to draw with you for a while and see where we go because it's nice to draw, it's nice to share. Um, I've got some marker paper here and it's A4. 
all I've done is mark out the boundary within which I'd like to work, but that doesn't mean that I am going to work within that boundary. As in, sometimes things have a habit of spilling out with me. So let me just gather my materials together, gather my heads and I'll be back in. Okay, so hopefully these pens will work. I dug them out of a pencil case, forgot to get them first. O2 and an O5 Unipin pen. These are what I tend to use if I can't find my Copics, Copic multi-liners, and um, no, I can't find them. I've put them somewhere and I don't know where I've put them. That means I've probably got at least two sets lurking around the house somewhere. But yeah, I know. So I'm just going to draw along. I'm just going to draw some things and see what happens. And you're welcome to join along with me. If this kind of size intimidates you, don't use it. Just whatever size piece of paper you like and just draw with me. I'm going to stay pretty much in one area. I tend to, to start in one place and grow out. And that's exactly how you can work as well. Is that go okay? Is that good? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? I think so. I don't know why my picture's so dull here. Yeah? I'm just auto-focusing again because this paper's a bit higher up than the others. Let me just have a look here. It could just be my screen that I've turned the brightness down at night. I think I'm okay though. I think we're okay. All right, so I want to start with something to grow from. And I think today what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in a corner because, oh, move my keyboard out the way so I can move this up so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Let's have a look. So, um, I'm going to start in a corner. I'm going to start with um, an arc or an arch, part of an arch. And I've managed to pick up a pen that has got a totally flat top, but I'll work with it. And I'm going to pop another one below it. I often start with the biggest one and work smaller. And you can see that I've round I've I've rounded the ends off so they, they stick out. Which you could round them inwards. I've done that in the past. And I could do that with these, but I'm actually going to stick with straightish lines. I mean I have got the um oh where's that pencil case? I really dislike pens. That pen needs to go out. So it's probably full of ink, but I am so... I wreck pens at a fast rate of knots. Ooh, that looks a bit better. It looks better doesn't mean it is better. Okay. Um, don't know what I was saying. What I do want to do, though, is I am going to add some... Oh, yeah, that's a bit better. They tend to go flat on the top because that's how I hold my pen. Fairly upright. But I'm just putting some darkness on one side, just thickening the line a bit. And it instantly adds some um, dimension there. And I do want to add um, uh, something in the middle. So I'm going to go roughly about the middle of this arc here. And I'm going to draw a mooka, like so. And I'm going to do one the other side, but I'm creating a V shape between them quite deliberately. And yet they're different sizes. That doesn't worry me one little bit. No, don't like this pen either. But it's going to have to do because I'm not going hunting for the box of them. Because no doubt I've put those somewhere safe and I could be looking for a long time. And I do know I've got a limited amount of time before I have to say, right, that's it, back's, back's hurting. Or it's more round my side and my front now, but they all, but the muscles all pull on one another. So, so I'm just going to echo that V shape and round the ends like that, just to create Almost like we've got a fanciful or fancy pattern in an arch there. Quite like that. 
In arches, you often have leaves and things growing. Well, in my world, you do. Welcome to my little weird world. So I think I'll add, I'm going to add some of these weird crescenty moon foliagey kind of stuff. I'm sure there's a name for it, but I'm not too worried what they're called. So I've actually done the central part in black and then three um, repeats of the shape auras as it's turned in Zentangle. So just going to draw some there. Though that one's got four, there may be some that have three, maybe some will have five because I'm keeping count isn't always something I'm very good at at the moment. And where they meet, I'm just going to add a little bit of ink there. Not that that matters actually. So I'm going to draw the next one here. Oh, and I did this one backwards, didn't I? Does it matter? Nope. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. But um, sometimes this is the best way to make sure that you, sp you space them evenly if you want to space them evenly. This one's a bit of an odd shape. And I'm not going to get four. of the auras so I'm just going to do two four auras three auras isn't it four layers with the middle shape and I'm not going to on this one but I am going to color it in black there and then with these I'm just going to curl and round the edges there it's just something nice instead of leaving them straight edged it always feels nice if I put a little like a rounded end to them, it just feels that well they've finished off in a nice way then. This one will just curve back on itself. Perhaps this one will just have two auras round that black centre. And that's fine. I'll just go back and add <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh dear. All I want now is a cough and a cold <coughs> because uh, if I have a cough it really does start to hurt again which is not good but I'm on the mend. It's cause a celebration and um, some of the pressure I was putting on myself about deadlines and things is great. I'm so grateful that's been sorted for now which is wonderful I don't like having to ask for more time an extension to my deadline but I have no choice now and I'm learning some really difficult lessons for me in life about things like this and I, I'm guessing that as I age it's going to become more important because um, we all age my head tells me I'm about 18 years old perhaps a little bit older um, but I've always had a kind of wise head on, on me, but my body tells me I'm a lot older these days at times. At the moment I feel like I'm a thousand years old. Well, it's better than the million I was feeling. So, you know, we're getting better. All right. So that's what I've got so far. Now I could put another layer in here and I am so tempted to. But what I think I'm going to do before I do that is I love these these odd swirls and shapes that we can create. These lovely folds and so on. So this is what I'm going to do. So I've put just a shape I've chosen to come from between here. And I could actually almost put it like I've got um, a little container, something holding it there. But I think perhaps I'll just do that in just black so it looks like it's growing out of 
out of the space here. And I'm just going to aura this, but allow the lines to vary in space between them, just that little bit. Here, I think I need another line that will go in between there. And again, I'm just going to join them with little, little semicircles, little arcs, little bumps. And I've got this lovely shape here. It's like a fat teardrop, isn't it? A short fat teardrop. So I want to bring that out just a little bit. And perhaps like that. And I'm just going to fill that in there. That doesn't work. So I'll fill that, all of that in black. In fact, I'll fill all of that shape in black. This is what I can do once this is dried. I can use a white gel pen if I want to put any shapes in there. But I can start doing the same kind of thing from the other side. Like so. And perhaps leaving a gap here and there. Like this, because that will create an interesting space to put something in maybe. Oh, well, with me, I know what I want to put in there, but you don't have to. You can fill that in any way you want if you're following me exactly. Uh, I've just created one of my weird eyes because, well, it seems to be a thing and I have no idea. No eye. No idea. No idea why. It, it's just one of these things, I think. Now I'm just going to start creating almost like a plume of feathers there. So it could be a strange kind of bird, especially if I adjust the shape there so it looks a bit like a very curved beak, maybe. But um, I want to do something behind it because I don't want... anything strange to distract from this. So I'm just going to draw a circle behind it to begin with. And yep, gets all red. And um, because I love spirals so much. So I've just followed this line and just decided at a point I'm going to put a spiral there. And in the middle, I tend to add something that's like a little teardrop or a curved teardrop or a little leaf on the end. Rather than just a straight line, I like to finish them off. Sometimes I'll finish them off with a dot or a circle. Sometimes something that really does look like a leaf. It just depends how I feel on the particular day or moment. And then I also want to carry this on around the other side like so. So I'm going to do some rounding and weighting as it were. So we've got a lovely, lovely kind of shape going on here. So it's beginning to look interesting already. Well, I think it is, but you know, we're talking here about me. So what I'm going to do here is in the center here, I'm actually going to draw some petal shapes, but they're going to be much broader at the bottom than they are at the top, so we get these little points. And then I've got a finer pen here, I've got the O2, and I'm going to use that just to get a smaller version of the shape inside, just like that. I'm actually going to use it to add the ink between the sections. I can find it really cumbersome to do with a thicker pen. 
And I'll sometimes change to a finer pen to do this when I think about things. In the same way, I often change to a finer pen if I want to add some line weight because I can control the thickness a lot easier than with a thick pen. So I've just done that here where I've added some weight to the top and more or less to the right here just to give that feeling this is in shadow. But on the outside I can. Make these just that little bit wider here and here, here and there, like that. And with this, I do want to try and add some weight here somewhere so we get some dimension, especially around that eye. work quite nicely. I can come back and add some more details in a moment and I don't want that one. So here now I'm going to add another circle in here and I am going to finish it off on the outside. I didn't go in inside that this circle I went to the outside because I realized I had an awkward gap here so if I want to add anything to the outside, that gap there would be awkward awkward, or could look awkward, in my, to my mind anyway. So I just decided then to um, draw all of this on the outside to create a second bigger circle. If I'd thought in advance, <laughs> yeah, right, I could have started with the outside one and put the inner one in. But either way, we get to the same... Um, results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that nice little bit of rounding there as a place to put my first kind of petal because I am going to turn this into a flower of a kind. At least I'm putting petal shapes all around it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to end up a flower but it will more than likely. Just like this, find a pen and I am going to definitely aura in the middle to borrow the Zentangle term. Just like that. And then I want to add some shadow to the bottom on the outside so it looks like we've got a really quite weighty ring sat on the top so these petals automatically look that much lower and then I'm also going to do the same kind of idea on the inside but at the opposite side so the top and to the right and that just gives a lovely kind of um, dimension there now then because I want to use alcohol markers to add colour to this and I'm working on marker paper I could fill this in with pattern now, but something I've learnt from the two pictures I showed you first is that it may be best for me to leave big areas to add colour to because there's less likely less likelihood of me smearing. The, all the pigment ink that's on these sections here, I will try to pick it up with a kneadable eraser, but there's still a chance with any of the ink that a particular colour or too much um, of the colourless blender to mix could smear this pigment ink and I don't want smearing. I, I don't. So I think I'll leave that and I'll add detail later on. I've put these in because I would like something different in each and I am going to draw some lines in from roughly the centre of these petals out, about the same distance, like so. I mean, this one's a little bit shorter and it doesn't quite seem pointing at the right angle. But I'm then going to go on one side. I choose one that makes sense because they're not always perfectly in the middle. And then I'm just going to Join them together with a little arc. 
and then I'm going to join these with a with almost like the top of a heart. So we'll curve downwards to a point and then back up again. Almost like we're going to draw the top of a heart, but we don't quite manage it, like so. And then here, I am going to... And that's because it will make sense here of this little space. If I draw these this way. So we've got something like a little jewel, a little gem, a little drop of dew sticking out from the tops. And what I could do is draw a line that goes down here. But I think I may leave that until I've added colour again. I, there's a couple of things I could do. I could draw another version of this in between. I could draw like a leaf shape there or a seed. You know, I could just fill this with lines. But I'm going to leave it as it is. I've got enough there to work with. Okay. So what I am going to do though, is I am going to add some line weight. I'll start with these sections in between. And I'm going to go and add weight to the line that is to the bottom and to the right. I think it is. Like so. And then with these, it's more of these ones there, but a little bit there. So a little bit there, but these, the top parts, are going to be the ones that have most of the, the shadow. And here it's just towards that centre and a little bit along the edge there. And that then just gives that, um, that feeling that we've got something that's quite solid there. Okay, lots of solidity going on here. So what about something a little bit different? I think what I might do, my head is going to gorgeous. And I know that one of the new patterns, I can't remember its name, sort of starts like that. But I, it's a huge pattern and I don't want to do anything huge, really. But I've also got a lot of ink in this space. So rather than me start something off, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an area of space here, which I'm just going to leave empty for now. I deliberately put a little wobble in there so that if I do wobble anywhere, the wobbles will look intentional. Because if you have one wobble and none anywhere else, it stands out. You've got a few wobbles. It looks intentional and I do tend to do things like that. Okay, I just need to add some weight on that there. And then I think there would be quite nice. Yep, that works. Looks chunky. We do chunk. And then with this one, I am going to chunk, chunk, chunkify. I'm going to add some line weight beneath this arch. It's a lot easier if I got a flexible nib pen out or a thicker nib, but that'll do. And then I've defined this space, which could be behind all of this. So I might have other gaps elsewhere. And if I leave them, I'll fill them in with the same colour and the same kind of background texture. So, for example, I could fill this with a dark blue and white spots to make it look like a night sky. And that could be dotted all over or whatever I decide to do. Yeah. But of course, by the time I get to that point, I may have forgotten I said that. Not that I'm going to draw all of this today. I'm conscious of time. I know the first part of the video looking at some artwork and talking about them was about a quarter, quarter of an hour. This one's been nearly half an hour already. So, okay. So I do want to have a shape here. And I do love spirals. I've most probably said this before, but I'm going to say it again because 
if you're new here, you may not have heard me talk about this. And if you're one of my subscribers or returning visitors here, you may have heard it before, but you may have forgotten it or found it interesting. Here, I live, I live in South Wales in the United Kingdom. And not very far from me, although I live inland, about a 25 mile drive if that, I'm at the, I'm at the coast. It's not the major sea or ocean as such, it is, it's the Severn Estuary, which is a major river that runs through England and Wales, rises in Wales. And it's enormous and it has the second highest tidal range in the world. I think the highest one is the Bay of Fundy, which is somewhere in Canada. And as a child, we used to go down to a beach there that's called Southern Down. We used to know it's Dunraven, it's now called Southern Down. And when I was little, because it's, you know, back in the dark ages, there were very few people there and it was such fun. I mean, the, it's changed so much there because of erosion because coastal erosion is a thing, it's real. But it's all the, a lot of the rocks, it's shale, mudstone or siltstone and limestone there. And the limestone dates back to Carboniferous times. Limestone is laid down at the bottom of a sea, usually a warm sea, and the limestone is full of ammonites. And I, even to this day, when the rocks are exposed after a good storm, I love to go down. I don't do it often, but if I do, I have to walk around the rocks. I'm looking for fossils, either whole ones, which are rare to find these days, but trace ones will do me just fine. And I am still filled with awe and wonder that I'm looking at something that is over 200, 250 million years old or, or so. And... I used to bring loads of them home when I was a kid. Once there was a cliff fall and it was, a, it was new overnight and we arrived there and I had to get on top of this chunk of rock. It was far enough away from the cliff to be safe. And I kid you not, there was an ammonite on the top that must have had a diameter from side to side of about five, five or six foot. My father and my uncle absolutely point blank refused to try to get it out or carry it for me. And so I had to leave it there. And the next, we went back the next day because it was a nice summer and it had gone. Somebody had had it. And I was gutted <laughs> and it was perfect. You know, it was much perfect as it was going to be after it had fallen, you know, from a cliff. So me and spirals, because ammonites are the spiral fossils, spiral shelled fossils. And there's the closest living relatives are nautiluses, nautiloids. But, um, say the closest living relatives um but they're not identical and well I just love them and one of the things that I've been doing over the past few weeks because for about three weeks all I could really do was lie down get up to visit the bathroom and clean myself and what have you um get myself something to drink maybe make myself something to eat answer the door to the takeaway driver which was often the case because I couldn't cook or shop or anything couldn't drive anywhere um was watch television or whatever so YouTube was a wonderful place for me to exp you know to be and the number of fossil <laughs> fossil channels people who go fossil hunting and preparing them was amazing and I'm still watching them now um, and more keep getting recommended to me. And it's fascinating. And of course, I know that the fossils are different around the world, although there are overlaps. But um, I just absolutely love it. And um, when I was a teacher, because um, I was a science teacher for 28 years, and uh, we used to have, you know, professional development opportunities and, and so on. And I went on a course to our to the National Museum of Wales in Cardiff. And it wasn't a course, it was kind of a working party. It was the, the staff who went there were there, we were seconded from work for, I think it was a total of three or four weeks to work on 
um, the Evolution of Wales exhibit, not to work on it, but to work with it to create a pack of experiments and activities and worksheets and so on, so that schools from primary school to secondary school could make use of it, because it's, it's fantastic. Even now, I don't know how many years old it is, but I haven't been to the, I haven't been to the museum since just before COVID hit. But I have to go there and I have a sketchbook with me and I draw and I take photographs of fossils I've seen many times. I don't care because every time it's a different direction. But um, it was wonderful because we got to work with fossils from the collection, not from the exhibition because they're fixed there. But we got to see the workings of the museum behind the scene and you know, talk to experts and things, and it was a fantastic experience, although sadly nothing came of it afterwards. And another time, I went there for a, I think it was a two-day course, and it was about asteroid impacts on the Earth and, you know, predicting them and looking at meteorites and what we can learn from them. And I was loaned a set of meteorites in a, in a bulletproof, explosive-proof, drop-proof case. And I had to sign um, really serious paperwork to have them. And some of them were older than the Earth. They're the oldest things in the solar system. And they were there before this, our solar system existed because they came from stars and they had exploded that, that our sun was born from the stuff they exploded from. Yeah, I know, science. And so holding these things and the wonder of having them and travelling back home, I travelled travel, home there and back by train. I couldn't have this case more than a foot away from me. I had to keep my hands on it because the one of one, just one of those meteorites, and it was only tiny, was valued at something like £20,000, I think it was. The whole collection was I don't know how much. And they let me borrow this. And my students, my special needs students, were absolutely in awe of this. And they would say, Miss, Miss, can we look at them rocks again? Well, of course I had to show them. So it's a fascination I've had or an interest I've had for as long as I can remember being aware that there are stars and planets and things we can learn about. And just like, you know, those influences find their way into my artwork, whether it's in the form of you know, spirals inspired by ammonites or shell shapes or patterns from rocks or, you know, just, just things that I've seen and that engage me. I might take just a tiny element from it. Rocks where you look through them in thin section and you see the most amazing crystals and colours when it's through polarised light and, and all the wonders of finding micro fossils that you can't see unless you've got, you know, a powerful microscope. Just, well, yeah. So, I think I'm telling you about this, A, because I enthuse about such things and I, and I can't help myself. But B, it's an insight into my mind and where I I get these, you know, where I've got this inspiration from or what has influenced me greatly. A lot of my sketchbooks from my A-level art days when I was in my late 30s, early 40s, have got pictures, drawings of either entire ammonites or microscopic um, shells and, 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 you know, extinct fossils, and what, you know, extinct creatures' fossils and so on, or just sections of them focusing in on the patterns. And I've been doing that since I don't know how long, because I used to do it when I was a scientist, you know, you know, doing a degree or when I was in school doing science, you'd have to look at things and observe them and look at the important parts, isolate the important parts and draw those, and ignore the rest. And so it all ties in together. It's just that now I don't have to follow the rules of science. I follow the rules of art, which means, Angela, if it works for you, you do it. And it's the same for all of you. If it works for you, then that is all that you need to worry about. Because I'm a great believer in us each expressing ourselves in our own way, even if we're 
not sure. I, I'm not sure about it still. I, I swap and change between styles. I'm forever experimenting and exploring things. And I'm looking forward to being able to get back to spending a lot of time with arts and crafts and, you know, looking at those and then using those for inspiration and working with them until I develop my own way. Um, and illuminated manuscripts. I bought books of um, lettering styles from Celtic manuscripts like the Book of Kells to medieval manuscripts recently and some, um, you know, sort of like Celtic knotwork letters and so on. So I can look at those and, and see them. I can see them on the screen on the computer, but I like a book for it. And uh, yeah, so. So I can get overly enthusiastic and I forget to draw, forget to describe what I'm drawing, but it's, it's finding what your passion is, isn't it? Or what really floats your boats artistically and that love that I have of ammonites and fossils has never really ever left me it really hasn't and it never will and so those spiral shapes will always find their way into my artwork somewhere what am I doing here do you know, I don't know, but I'm just, I just felt that this section here just needed something that was a little bit different just to fill that, that gap up or to open it out in some way. And I quite like that. So it, you just go with it. Okay, so. How long? 40 minutes and 15, about Oh, yeah, 55 minutes-ish the video will be at the moment. So, what I think I might do is I'm going to let that dry as I grab a colour I'd like to use. Because I do think I know what colours I'd like to use for this one. Because I'm going to dig them out from my... Ooh. I think that one. I've got a cinnamon here and that would look lovely with a blue and I think I might try the royal blue. Now then, somewhere here in my pile of stuff, I did see, oh I've got, yep, I've got a piece of marker paper here. So let's have a look and see that cinnamon, which is a kind of lovely red-brown colour. This one I've picked out the royal blue, but I'm not sure it's the colour I'd like. Mm, no. It works. It works. Don't get me wrong. That'll be okay. But I was looking for a darker colour. And I think it'll be this one that I'll be going with. Which is an indigo. Yeah, I prefer the indigo and the brown, but I think I want a yellowy brown and ochre as well. So, let me have a look. This is the problem with the... Um, with the chameleons is that you've, you've got a very limited colour palette. That's taupe, so that would work quite nicely. And let me pop that that way. And I know I've got burnt umber will be the other end of this one. You see how these will pick, I don't know if you can see, but I can see them picking the colour up and blending them out. So I love the chameleons as well. That will actually work quite nicely. I might need to re-ink those. But I think that, I have got a darker blue than, I don't know, what's the blue violet like? Nope, 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 nope. Just use those for now and see what happens. Okay, so I do want to, I fill some of these in and I'm going to use the cinnamon 
Now, if you haven't come across chameleon markers, they are quite unique. I don't think any other company makes them like this. We've got a brush tip on this end, and I'm not a fan of their brush tips because they're very soft and they do end up like brushes. They, they splay out and so on. They don't keep a point. But they are really good for filling in big areas. Bullet, bullet tip, which is really nice and firm, I like those. And then we've got this here. And this comes off, and I don't know, might be able to see inside. You see there's a colourless or white tip in there. This is filled with the colourless blender. And what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to fill this section here with this colour, I'm going to put this on top of the colour pen. They'll meet in the middle and then the colourless blender will flow down into this. You hold it upright Ooh, as I press it on too hard. And you just sort of like roughly time, or you can not roughly time it, you can actually count it or measure it absolutely accurately. And then what will happen is, perhaps I won't do that one, perhaps I'll do this one. I've got some colour on here, but it is mostly colourless blender. So I did leave it on for quite a while. And then as I work with this, you'll see that there's more and more colour starts to come out, like here and here. And that as I go back and forth, I'm getting more and more colour coming through. And I get a complete gradient quite easily like that. It actually worked really nicely. So I'm going to do the same in this section. So I'm going to start in the middle with the lightest bit. Didn't leave it on enough for enough of the colourless blender to come through. So what I'll do is I'll just leave this on a little bit longer here. Sometimes they're a little bit misaligned, the, the tips, and you sort of like have to twist and turn things while they're making that connection. So I'll just bring that down. And there we are. Like so. And then once I've done this, that means once these are dry, I can fill these in with other patterns, which is what I'll do in a moment. I'm just going to do this section. Back and forth, I'm actually using little circular motions here. So again, I've just added, I'm out of practice with them and working out how much time I need to let the colourless marker actually blend into the colour. We'll work it though. The nice thing is once they dry, you can go back over them anyway. You can glaze over with darker colours and they will blend. So I'll just do that. Some colourless blender. Just blend that one down and that'll be fine. And I'll do that little section there as well. Now you don't have to go out and do these because the principles are the same. If I didn't have these, I'd be looking at using probably two colours, three colours here. So a dark, medium and light. So what I do then is I would fill the whole of that section with light colour. Then I'd put the medium in so far, as far as I want it to go, then the dark. I'd use the medium to blend the dark out and then the light to blend the medium out. It's just a bit more of a potch, I suppose. Whereas this is a little less potchy. So here I'm going to start in the corner my colourless blender. I'm going to have to go back because I left it on while I was talking. So I'm going to get a very pale colour here, but I can go back. Like so. And then perhaps again. And eventually I'm going to get that darker colour there. So I've got a nice gradient there. That makes me happy. It's easy, isn't it? It doesn't take much, really. And here I'm actually going to start with a circle and I'm going to work around it until I touch that one. Then I'm going to come back and forth and fill the rest of this in with a darker colour like that. And if I need to, 
I can just use some colourless blender on it again and just blend that out just that little bit more. Marker paper, it doesn't take a lot of paper, a lot of the ink to actually wet the paper. And you can see this one, how wet it is. It's glistening over there. You can see it drying as I talk. And um, if you have papers that are absorbent, they use a lot of ink. So that is really quite nice. I like that. OK, you just pop the lids back on. You don't want to leave the lids off these. I've got this lovely indigo blue and I'm going to use the bullet tip here. Because again, I'm going to let the colourless blending solution flow into the pen. And then I'm going to decide where I want the lightest bit, which is going to be here. And I'm just going to start blending this out. And I, with this one again, I'm working in little circles. Try not to go outside of my lines because not that that would be a problem. As I'm beginning to learn, because in the grand scheme of things, it's not that important, it seems. Things can always be disguised and masked. Or a colourless blender pen is used to help to make the spillovers vanish if you need to, or to pe make them paler so they're less noticeable. And round the edge of the page, round the edge of the design, if it's that bad, white gel pen. Because most of my work is scanned in anyway. So I've just done that. I may just put some darker colour here. And that I think will be fine for that. Pick some of the black ink up here because there is a lot of black on that eye. So I put plenty of the blue in and I'll use a white gel pen then to put the highlight in. But it works. Okay. I'll just do one little bit more. And so uh, here. Put too much of the colourless blender down and I've picked some of the black ink up again, but we'll disguise it. Now with the colour tops, which look a bit like the, it's called the blending chamber at the top. They look a bit like that, but they've got colour in. So if I use one of those, which I'll show you now, because I will just put the lids back on there. Okay. I've got indigo. So I could go for a dark, darker colour, a completely different colour. How about a lighter colour? Let's go for sky blue. So I'll show you that on my scrap piece of paper. Oh. You see, paper's treated so the alcohol marker doesn't bleed through usually. It can bleed through, but um, it's nowhere near as bad as just plain paper. So I'm just adding some sky blue, which is a pale blue here. So when I start with this, you should see the pale blue. And as I hopefully work out... Put a bit much on there, I think. Yeah, it's beginning to change colour. And we'll eventually get back to the indigo blue. Beginning to now. Just go back to that colour. There we are, we're back there. More or less. It's this colour still. I'm just going to scribble until we get to that colour. 
So I can I can also add gradients like that. So let's add a little bit of that and then like this. They, they do um I'll cut the chameleons do pencils and fine liners. I'm not by the way, I am not sponsored in any way, shape or form by them. It's just that I bought the my chameleons when they were on uh, like a Kickstarter kind of thing. Um, on pre-order before they'd even made them. I think I had to wait about a year before they'd been made and develop, you know, developed and made so they were fully functioning. And um, I'm so glad I did because I, they're so easy to use and blend. But the odd thing is, they may be easy to use and blend, but I still learned an awful lot about blending and how alcohol markers work. And you can do this with... You know, any alcohol marker, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, these. And of course, blending colour, it's the same whether you do alcohol markers or not. So you can see I'm beginning to get colour on here. Now, what I can do with these, notice I haven't done this one because I don't know what I want to do with these yet. I'm going to see how they crop up around the page. But with this one over here, I can add pattern to it and I think the pattern I'm going to add very quickly I'm going to add this now it's a zentangle it's a pattern in zentangle called Shattuck so what I'm doing is it's a, it's a zigzag the basic form is a zigzag, but I draw each part of it one step at a time. So I went this way. So I'm now going to come back like this. <coughs> so I've created like a piece of a piece of pie or a piece of pizza. And I'm then going to aura down to the point. But I'm breaking the aura, with the dot in between. And did you notice I also thickened that very first line, which will help to bring the pattern out. I think what I might want to do is just colour in the base of that just to give it some weight and some dimension. I think I might also use my thicker pen to draw this starting line because it gives that very definite shape. Now I do these sections one at a time because I can easily get confused with things if I draw that zigzaggy line in to begin with. If you prefer, you can do this zigzaggy line straight, it doesn't matter. I just like the curved version, I think, here. So there's my other one. By doing this, I know that I'm not going to smudge the ink, this ink, the pen ink, at all. I can minimise it. I should have done it here by um, using a, an eraser to just pick up any excess pigment sitting on the surface because that's essentially what it is. It's pigment inks like um, the one in the Unipins in the Sakura Microns and all the others that are... Uh, sort of like waterproof or water resistant. You've got an ink. I mean, this is, they're usually water based, but instead of having a dye dissolved in the ink, as you do with fountain pen ink or um, any of the water soluble inks like you get in Tombows or the Karin markers or the Ecoline pens, pigment has got tiny little bits of solid in it and they they don't dissolve in water but they float tiny tiny micro pieces and when they dry they stick to the paper but some are on top of one another and they can move it depends what you're using how long you leave it to dry for the longer you leave it to dry for the less chance there is to smear but you can leave it to dry Give it an hour or so, come back, 
run an eraser over it and the eraser will pick up any loose pigments so you're less likely to smudge it. Disadvantage to that is it can make the black less black but if you're planning on going over things and um, having to darken things again then it's no problem and really if you like me I, I scan mine in digitally and then I alter things with um, some photo editing software um, I can bring that black back so I'm not too worried and make any you know if I make big boo-boos I can adjust things and correct things and you know that kind of stuff do some editing and so on so this is the start so if you're working on a square you know, you might be up at the top corner of the square by now. And I'll carry on and do some more of this. I'll put this to one side. I shall write in pencil which are the chameleon colours I'm planning on using so I don't forget. And um, hopefully I'll see you again soon. I don't know about tomorrow because tomorrow, this I'm, I'm recording this on Saturday the 17th of December. Tomorrow I've got a couple of things occurring on Zoom in the day. And um, my central heating is being serviced. Um, there's been a lot of problems. My, my central heating is fine, but it needs a service. And the chap who is servicing it for me has been run off his feet with people who've had problems with their, their heating in the cold weather. Um, the condensation, condensate pipe that vents out into the air outdoors usually they've been freezing up and when they freeze up and you can't defrost them it stops the central heating of the boiler from working so you don't have hot water and you don't have central heating so he's been run off his feet so he asked if he could come tomorrow and I said if that's if that's not a problem to you of course you can and he said thank you and I said if you need to cancel again if you need to arrange don't worry I'm here I'm not going far still can't drive far bit further than I could but I'm not pushing myself too much so I'm wittering on but I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you've enjoyed a look at the art at the beginning I hope you give drawing along with me with this a go and change it at your will do as you wish because it will become your own art that way I haven't got alcohol markers use whatever colouring medium or just graphite pencil Whatever is your preferred way of adding colour, highlight, shade. That's entirely your choice, your decision. So I shall see you again soon. Until then, look after yourselves, take care. And more than anything else, find time to be creative. Ta-ta for now. Bye. Hoyle.